data. Everything I've showed you th so thus far is more for cases like t-test and ANOVA. That means between groups variances. But what about if you have paired data, like in the paired samples t-test? How do you test variances in those cases? You use the Pittman-Morgan test. And what it is is it's basically the correlation between the sum of the respective paired scores and the difference between those respective paired scores. If you get a positive correlation, or a negative one actually, it doesn't matter, but if you get a statistically significant correlation, that means the variance at time 1, or pair 1, is statistically different than the variance at time 2. Uh, it's, there's a more robust method uh, for the Pittman-Morgan test where instead of using the Pearson correlation, you actually use the Spearman correlation. So this is more robust when your distributions are skewed or just not normally distributed. How important is this uh, assumption? Uh, there's a t-test and ANOVA uh, can handle differences in variances up to four times between smallest and larger. And I've got Howell as a reference for this. This is Howell's Statistics Methods for Psychology textbook. He did a very brief summary of the various publications that have looked at uh, the homogeneity assumption uh, test. And when you violate that assumption and you do t-tests or ANOVAs, uh, you can handle four times greater. In my opinion, looking at the results, I think five times greater is actually still pretty robust. And what robust means is that when we test statistical um, tests with t-tests and ANOVA, we're assuming alpha of 0 0.05. And it's robu considered robust so long as if our data um, still uh, correspond to uh, an alpha level of 0 0.075 when tested with a t-test or an ANOVA. So there's a bit of an allowance of 0.025% in alpha increase. So uh, in my opinion, even five times greater, you're still roughly playing in that ballpark of 0 0.075 rather than something greater than 0 0.075. But this assumes um, uh, Actually, I wonder if I mention that later. Um, how are the MSA are unequal? Oh, yes, okay. This assumes, of course, that your sample sizes are equal. The four times and five times greater rule that I'm talking about now. Uh, it's really amazing how much difference it makes when your sample sizes are unequal. I would say even if your sample sizes are different by 10%, uh, so a sample size of 10 versus 9, it actually really starts to affect um, the alpha level that you, you're testing your, your tests on. So unequal sample size is a real killer if you've got, un, if you've got statistically significant differences in the variances. Paired sample t-tests actually assume homogeneity of variance. I would argue that it does assume that. But uh, because paired sample t-tests are always equal sample sizes, you can't have an unequal number of time 1 and time 2 paired data. It has to be exactly the same. So because you're dealing with equal ends, people don't really talk about the assumption very much. Um, so you can pretty much assume that you're not violating the assumption in a consequential way. Uh, but the Pittman-Morgan test is still interesting because sometimes you actually want to know the difference between variances from a substantive perspective. You actually want to test that. Here are the references that I've used in this study, or this review. Uh, the Conover test, which looked at and compared the Levine's uh, mean test versus the Levine's median test. And Grissom's is a, a, a good review of the, of the literature, a non-technical good review of the, uh, of the te of research that's been done up to 2000. Uh, here's another review, more recent, uh, a little more technical, but uh, very uh, thorough and goes through a lot of examples that um, use uh, Levine tests and various tests in, in, a, in applied way. And here's the uh, Nordstoke and Zumbo uh, pa papers that have actually used the non-parametric Levine test. That's a very good test, uh, in my opinion, that's very robust. Uh, and I, I probably didn't go over what a recommendation is enough for this. And in my opinion, when you have normally distributed data, then you should just use the plain ordinary Levine's test, which uses the mean. But if your data are non-normally distributed, uh, and or your sample sizes are unequal, then you're probably better off using the uh, non-parametric Levine test, which is the test based on the ranks. And um, that pretty much leaves the Levine test based on the medi medians out in the cold, uh, because it's not as powerful as the Levine mean test uh, when the sample sizes are normal. And conversely, 
the non-parametric test is more powerful and uh, more robust when sample sizes are unequal and non-normally distributed. So I think those are the two options you've got. I'm going to actually follow up this video with very applied way of how to test these various tests. I'm not going to do the Hartley F Max, but I'm going to go through the, the three Levine tests. And I'm also going to talk about the, um, the uh, Pittman-Morgan test. And I'm going to show you how to actually do these tests. In I'm going to use SPSS, but because um, the, the manner in which I'm going to do it, you can do it in any package. You could even do it probably in Excel. Because uh, I'm just going to calculate the differences between the, the absolute differences. So I encourage you to look at the follow-up video I have. I'll call it something like Levine's test in SPSS, uh, and you can check that out. I hope you found this uh, introduction to variances and the homogeneity variance tests and assumptions useful. Thanks for watching.